Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Today we're going to talk about two different Kickstarters, uh, Blurry Vision from our uh, last podcast, or one of our last podcasts, the Tycho one. A few podcasts ago now. Um, asked about the, um, I can't, my mind's blanking. Genesis, you Genesis. have it down I know, right there. I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's an early week after Star Wars Day. Yeah. Um, so the Genesis 3D printer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's another. Can I again, be careful not to hit the table. It's another uh, another Kickstarter 3D printer. Yes. Okay. So Jake, you've done a little it's, bit more research on this than I have. Yeah. It's so. got about. So by the time this airs, it's already been done and complete. Um, it's already reached its goal. I don't actually know what the goal was now that, that I remember. Goal back. was five thousand. Yeah, I think the goal is forty five thousand. And I, and I four hundred thirty one thousand two hundred ninety as of right now. It has tw uh, about about thirteen hundred um, backers, about three hundred thirty five dollars per backer. So that's actually right around the same price point as their printer, which is at three seventy nine or three forty nine. Excuse me, is what the actual retail price is. So it's kind of interesting so to see. Is that the retail price or is that the Kickstarter early backer? Retail price is is going to be three forty nine. But it's kind of interesting to see how much each individual person kind of like roughly spent on the Kickstarter roughly everyone spent about three hundred thirty five dollars yeah and so something that's skewing that average a little bit higher um, they do have a few different versions of the printer so there are some deluxe versions that have a higher price point than 349 mm -hmm. um, but then there are also some lower cost versions where uh, it's just the, the single head versus the dual head I think the 349 is for the dual head version of the Genesis and that is a one foot cubed bill volume Yep. So and 12 by 12 by 12. Yep. Okay. And so looking through their Kickstarter, it's it's pretty decent. Not, I mean, it, it's pretty good. It's a well put together Kickstarter. Uh, the build plate at the end, if you watch the video, and uh, I'm not sure what the actual material on the build plate is. I, I didn't see that. But um, it actually, you can see the person pulling off the part and it actually kind of pulls the whole kind of plate up, which is kind of interesting. Well, okay, so it's not, it doesn't seem to be the whole plate. The way that it seems to be is a heated build plate and then well, there's, a poly, a there's a polycarbonate sheet on top of it. Similar, which, to, similar to what the, uh, the MakerBot Z18 uses polycarbonate, but it's stuck to the build platform more here. Yeah. In the Genesis, it just has some binder uh, clips. It has some binder clips holding it on. So it's not going to help. Warping, it's, yeah, because it's, it's still gonna, gonna pull. It's gonna if, if it adheres really well to the platform, it's gonna pull up that, um, pull up that build plate, and mm -hmm. then start warping there, which is gonna cause some issues. So that was one thing that that I noticed. Um, there, one interesting, one interesting thing was there's no purge walls. I know you mentioned this in the video for for, for two color, yeah, for two yeah. color material, where the Rep Two X has a purge wall that'll actually. Um, get the material flowing to make sure that it's flowing before it goes back to the part so you don't have any gaps or, or a bad layer adhesion. Yeah, and Stratasys on their higher end machines, I don't believe they use a purge wall, but they have a purge container. So it'll actually go cool off one of the nozzles and then, for the, yeah, and then for the new nozzle, then it'll heat it up, purge material out, make sure it's flowing well, make sure that there's no degraded plastic still in the extruder, and then it'll start printing again. So I was surprised that it was printing as well as it was without mm -hmm. using any sort of purge wall or purge, uh, well, any sort of purge sequence. Yeah. And it was interesting. The, the, the printer kind of looks a little kooky to me, you know, and, and they actually have a video where they're grabbing it by the uh, by the x-axis and actually pulling it, you know, lifting it up off the off the table. So to let you know that the actual x bar is actually um, stable and it's actually rigid versus kind of looks like a kooky little thing where it's just kind of sitting out on the end, you know, you'd think that it would flex, but in their design, they don't really show this. Um, but it actually can hold its own weight and actually do a consistent level across. Um, the form, they actually, for their support, they actually have a forum. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how that works for them. Um, as far as, you know, with the price point, are you going to have more of your DIY, kind of like your Lulzbot users that are going to be going in there and using it? I think I think at that price point, they're, they're leaving the users to sort of figure stuff out on their own. They'll show, okay, here's... In general, here's how you do something, but I mean, with a price point of 350, if you have to deal with a customer doing even just 15 minutes of support, and if you have to do that multiple times, it's the lower cost printers. You have a you have a different type of customer than you do a mm -hmm. customer for a three thousand dollar printer. A three thousand dollar printer, you have a customer that is more willing to to work with stuff, where. It's, you'd think that the lower cost printers, people are more willing to work with them, but in a lot of cases, you get your more finicky customers that are budget conscious and say, okay, well, they want as much as they possibly can for the least dollar amount. So they they'll spend only, the most. Exactly. They'll spend a low dollar amount, but then they 
I mean, they want it to work immediately out of the box, and if they don't, then they they throw a fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's they just they throw a fit, and that's not that's not all the users. I mean, that's a, throw themselves on the ground, start balling I mean, in the Toys R Us. It's a pretty broad generalization, but in what we found, the people that try and lowball and get the lowest price are the ones that end up causing the most trouble in support stuff later on. They're, well, they're, 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 less, they're least... less willing to figure things out on their own. Yeah, and, but they're also the ones that, um, what am I trying to use for words here? They're the ones that expect the most, and then they also have the most tarnished idea of 3D printing after that experience. They're, they're, their experience is kind, of, is kind of bad then about 3D printing. They have a bad right. negative look on 3D printing because they went cheap the first time. Right. Um, the CEO, I, I read up on the team, they have two people on the team. Uh, the CEO is a fresh grad and I wasn't really able to find any information on the other other uh, member of the team. Um, but marketing and, and uh, engineering, mechanical engineering is the CEO's background and then marketing is the other founder's uh, background. So kind of interesting to see a two person team um, because when we talk about Moonray a little bit later, um, it's gonna be, um, it's just going to be, you're going to see there's a lot more people to the Moonray team and just kind of the, if you look at both Kickstarters, which one's kind of the more professional and which one's kind of looks like it's been, you know, well built and has a well, 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 uh, developed timeline. So, um, the water, they also have some water dissolvable stuff in there. So overall for the price point, it's an interesting machine. My personal opinion is... It's not going to be that great. I'll just be honest. I, I think it's going to be a, a good machine, but there's nothing that's really unique about it besides the shape and look of it. Well, the price point. I mean, if they can pull off... I mean, that's the thing. There's a lot of people that have tried to pull off a sub $500 printer, and it just... It doesn't work. No. Or let's, let's it's either, just, either that yeah. or by the time it ends up shipping, it it's half-baked or... People don't get all the parts. I mean, if they can pull it off, that'd be great. But they have it's, a very be, aggressive they'd be, timeline. They'd be the exception, not the rule. Yeah, they have a very aggressive timeline. They didn't show any of their prior work. Um, he, the CEO does have some work done in 3D printing, but you'll see in Moonrace Kickstarter, they actually say, all right, we've been working on this since 2013, and they want to launch, uh, I think, next, you know, January, December. Well, so back to the Genesis. Where, when are they looking at shipping? Uh, December. They, okay. So, December. so every single month, they have something else kind of dropping, which... You know, if they've been working on this product for two years and testing it, then yes, I think that's a really, really good timeline like Moonrays. But if, you know, they just kind of started developing this maybe last fall, I think it's a really aggressive timeline the that one, they might not be able to meet. Well, the one thing that I do like about the Genesis is they show the printer actually working. It's not just yeah. a bunch of renders. It's not saying, okay, well, here's an animation of how it could work, but showing it actually printing something. And I mean, being able to see the, you know, the, the blemishes too. I mean, for mm -hmm. example, they... I mean, seeing that it wasn't perfectly, uh, that the, the small print curled up that much, being able to see that, being able to see a two-color print actually, well, seeing the two-color print work and actually yeah. printing is a big deal. A lot of people, they'll maybe show a little bit of footage of the head moving back and forth, or they don't show the printer in action at all on a Kickstarter campaign. Those are the ones I think you should be worried about. The fact that they've actually shown it working. And those are usually I'm, a scam sometimes. Yeah. Well, and there's, there are a few, it seems like every week there's another Kickstarter that gets shut down because it's a scam, but... Genesis is one of the more, I have more faith in it than some of the other, well, than a vast majority of the other Kickstarters yeah. that I've seen. It's just going to be interesting to see how they compete in the market as far yeah. as the 3D printing side. So that's uh, the Genesis machine. Um, so we'll, we'll be kind of interested to see how that develops over the next year, over this year. Um, so Moonray, we talked to these guys when they, or I know I talked to these guys when they um, were at Santa Clara last fall. Great group of guys. Uh, their, 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 their prints look amazing. Yeah. Um, they can actually go down, I think it was to, where is it at, uh, 20 micron resolution in the Z axis, 100 microns in the X and Y. Um, so very, very precise. They actually have their own custom UV DLP uh, projector that they made themselves. It actually is more efficient. Um, they actually have a graph on there, which was kind of interesting, where you take a regular projector, it uses a wider range of the uh, light where this one uses a very small amount of the, of the light spectrum. Yeah, so because a lot of other projectors, if you think your typical DLP projector, like a movie projector, it shows the full uh, full spectrum because you, mm -hmm. you actually see the visible light, where with the UV projector, you only need the you only need a, a narrow band yeah. of uh, you know, the narrow frequency. So this projector only uses that frequency, yep. so it's able to have all of the power output just on that frequency. Yeah, and they have... Uh, um, with that, they can actually do, where's it at now? 
I wrote a bunch of notes. So they can actually have a, have a uniform output so, output so that there's you know less than 1% uh, deform, deformation on the parts, so which, is, which is really cool. They got a nice graphic that shows that as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's 161 backers for $317,000, and they have 32 days left to go. Um, so they actually have different points where more, more uh, awards or rewards, whatever you want to say, will actually get generated where like there's free shipping or an extra liter of leader of uh oh, resin. Uh, stretch stretch goals yeah stretch goals so that was interesting to see all those um it can do about an inch an hour um i tried to see what some of the higher end sla machines do i couldn't couldn't uh, dig that up well and the, the thing right is with time the thing is with the sla if it's using some sort of laser mm -hmm. the laser you can't mm -hmm. say it does so many inches per hour because a laser since it has to it uses a galvanometer to yeah. trace the uh, trace the outline of the object if you, one layer is going to take a different amount of time than a second layer, where with a DLP projector, SLA printer, it does a whole layer and it takes a consistent amount of consistent amount of time right. per layer, and that's what the that's yeah. what the, or what the Moon Ray is. The cool thing about this company is they've produced another printer called the Sprint Ray, so they've actually made a larger version of this, and they have a printer. We saw them back at Santa Clara in yeah, October, yeah. so they have a working machine, parts that have actually been produced. I mean, this is a Kickstarter where. It's not so much that they need the funds to make the project happen. It's that okay, they're gauging the amount of orders that they're going to need, and it's a great, uh, great PR thing for them too. I mean, it's it's marketing, but they're getting paid for the marketing, and that's you know that's what I mean. Some people will say, oh well, isn't Kickstarter supposed to be for funding the idea stage of a project? Well, no, that's you have a less likelihood of actually your receiving product. your product because we've seen a lot of those where it's something that gets funded, it's still in the idea stage, but they don't have anything priced out, they haven't mm -hmm. started producing anything, and then it falls 18 months behind schedule and by the time it comes out, no one cares anymore. Well, it's kind of like Shark Tank. You don't see Shark Tank investing in ideas, you see them investing in products and actual stuff. Yeah. So, same kind of concept. Um, so, another another couple interesting things is their timeline is very realistic. It, uh, it looks like, you know, they have everything planned out. It looks like they're actually going to hit their timeline. Um, one year warranty comes with the machine, so that's really nice um, because a lot of lot of the uh, 3D printing people, that's one thing they leave out is the warranties. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't think about that. Um, they have nine members of the team, um, which is a little bit more of a realistic number. I mean, if you look at how many people on our team um, to sustain what we do, uh, nine people is more realistic for, for a group of, of individuals. And... Yeah. Kind of the last thing about this is the uh, the CEO uh, Jasper actually was mentored by the guy that helped work on the house 3D printer. Which one? One of them. I don't know which okay. one. I didn't get into that one. But okay. Um, so yeah, and their packaging looks sexy. So mm. looks like a looks like a really nice product. So short and sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to cover next week, but we'll find something. Yeah, if you so have something, put it in the comments. Yep, definitely let us know. Just like this one, we were able to talk more about the Kickstarter stuff. Uh, you guys seem to really enjoy that. So if there's a project that you ever want us to take a closer look at, give our feedback. Uh, we can do that. Uh, we're not really, we don't really endorse any of these people. Um, but we, I mean, we just want to make sure that if you do back something, that it's, it's something that turns into an actual product that you can use and that you have a good 3D printing experience with it. Um, so definitely let us know if you have anything that you want us to talk about. But on behalf of Jay Clark and myself, John Schneider, thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube, iTunes, and check us out on all the different social media platforms we're on. So all the typical ones plus some of the weird ones too. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks. I'm trying to be taller than you. <laughs> I'm on a Chicago phone book.